Laura Chandler, host of the Sacred Stream radio podcast. And my guest today is Grammy nominated singer songwriter and author of the new book, Saved by a Song, The Art and Healing Power of Songwriting, Mary Gaucher. Mary has released 11 albums and has been described as one of the best songwriters of her generation by the Associated Press. She's won numerous awards and her songs have been recorded by dozens of artists, including Jimmy Buffett, Dolly Parton, Boy George, Kathy Matea, and Tim McGraw, to name a few. I'm really happy to have her on the show today, talking about her book and her latest album, Dark Enough to See the Stars. Welcome, Mary. Hi, hi, thanks for having me on. It's great to see you and it's great to have you here. I, you know, I wanna start by saying that um, I love your new album. I, it's, it's a beautiful album, uh, Dark Enough to See the Stars. And yeah, and um, it's just a, a demonstration of uh, your mastery of the craft. And I'm, I'm wondering um, if you have, if you can talk a little bit about the album. Well, um, it, it's a, a project that started uh, uh, during, I think, the pandemic. Um, started writing these songs, and uh, it, it's a, the thematically, it, it it's a it's about love, and uh, and it's about loss, uh, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I think that uh, the cycle of songs is is interesting to me because I've never really written straight up about romantic love uh, in the way that I did this time. And mm -hmm. um, I'm older now than I've ever been, aren't we all? But uh, mm -hmm. losing people, um, some because of COVID-19, some because of I'm just getting older. And so are the people that I love uh, coinciding with um, uh, romantic love in my life uh, has been a, an, an emotional a journey for me that uh, uh, has just been intense, and so it's a fertile, it's a, a fertile place for a songwriter to be, uh, and an intense place for a human being to be. And I guess that's my description of the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's um, they're they're powerful themes, and um, I think one of, I I love all of the songs, and um, Amsterdam is one that I really love. Thank you. Yeah, I wrote that with my partner, Jamie Harris, um, after we um, uh, went to Amsterdam together once the uh, international flight bans were lifted um, mm -hmm. after the pandemic was winding down. Well, I don't know how much, I mean, the, the, the vaccine had come. Um, things were slowly starting to reopen. Uh, flights were anything but full, but we got to go to play a festival in Denmark. And to get there, we had to go through Amsterdam. And we spent a couple of days uh, in one of my favorite cities, which I just love Amsterdam. I have a long relationship with Holland. Uh, my first record deal was there. Uh, played, I play the Netherlands a lot. And so returning to Amsterdam, I didn't know if I was ever going to do it. And so Getting to go back there and show my partner Jamie in Amsterdam for the first time, it was her first time there, it was just a thrill. So it's a joyful song about exploring that ancient city. Yeah, so it's really, it's a, it's quite an homage. <laughs> and uh, and Jamie sings on the album too, B beautiful backing vocals. And, and I think you've co-written some things with her as well. Yeah, I co-wrote that with her. Yeah, yeah, that was what it was like. yeah, we co-wrote uh, two songs on this record, Amsterdam mm -hmm. and How Could mm -hmm. You Be Gone, which is a, a straight up mm -hmm. story song about going to an out, outside funeral. Uh, during yeah. the pandemic, uh, people's services couldn't be held inside uh, un until vaccines came. So we went to an outside funeral with a mask on for a dear, dear friend of ours. Uh, and uh, it, it's a story of shock. And, and just the disbelief that 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 happens when someone you love is taken quickly and unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, many of your songs are, um, I, I think Rolling Stone described your, your 
Song of Mercy Now as one of the saddest songs, uh, top 20 saddest songs. And um, you talk a lot about writing sad songs and the power of going there. And I kind of want to jump into that because um, it, it's important to, to, to touch into those places and you do it so um, beautifully and, and you bring people into those places so beautifully. So um, I, I, I'm not so sure that I think Mercy Now is sad, but I, I, um, I know you talk a lot about the power of, of being willing to go to those places. Yeah, um, I think that the word sad gets thrown out uh, a lot w w when people are talking about my songs, and 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 I I'm not sure that that's exactly the right word. Um, I I feel as though my songs are real. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there there is uh, hope in every one of them. Mm -hmm. um, they're not songs of despair. Uh, they're songs of oftentimes uh, struggle, uh, but I, I feel that um, uh, I don't write escapist music. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a songwriter who sees my job as um, uh, helping people to check out. I, I tend to want to uh, check in when I write, mm -hmm. uh, and so the people who are drawn to what I do. Um, also experienced uh, a check-in, uh, and, and oftentimes that'll take you through some some struggle. Uh, but I don't I don't leave you there. Uh, there <laughs> there's there's always in in my work um, uh, going to be uh, uh, a reason to believe because that's just mm -hmm. how I am. I, if I didn't have that in the song, it wouldn't be an honest song. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the thinnest reason, mm -hmm. um, uh, there is uh, in my my experience as a human being always some something to believe in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't think that your music is your songs are sad. I think they're they're deep and um, they're emotionally fulfilling in a lot of ways. So people that want to feel deeply and go in to something, as you said, not to be escapist, um, really have that experience with with your music. I know I do, personally, I do. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, see, I'm not a pop songwriter. Yeah. I love pop songs and I listen to, yeah. I listen to pop music, uh, but yeah. that's not my genre. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I tend to, I tend to fall into more of a folk genre, mm -hmm. um, and I tend to to um, be drawn to uh, the work of people uh, like Leonard Cohen, Towns Van Zant, um, uh, the 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 stripped down Springsteen records like Nebraska, Ghost of Tom Joad, um, Lucinda Williams. Uh, uh, Guy Clark, the the storyteller songwriters, yeah. uh, whose kingdom is almost literature, you know, uh, yeah, which yeah. was I guess validated when the Nobel Committee gave Bob Dylan the Nobel Prize for literature for his songs, mm -hmm. many of them which are literature. Um, but mm -hmm. I think that uh, 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 the the challenge of someone like me. Uh, writing this way is to is to try to explain that it's 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 really not sad. It it, it is a journey, mm -hmm. and people will cry, but yeah. but then they thank me. Mm -hmm. So I just think we're so used to the Disneyfication of everything, uh, yeah. and the um, the the general understanding of art should be escapist. Um, right. So when someone's not subscribing to that, it's it's a little startling. Yeah. Well, in certain circles, maybe. You know, I, I think that um, the people who who are drawn to this podcast, at any rate, really would, if they haven't heard of you, um, because they've been in a cave like I I can 
be in a cave sometimes and discover things late. Um, if they haven't heard of you, they're going to be really glad to know about you and to hear your music. Um, and you know, you're you're right up there in in my in my book with Lucinda and Emmy Lou and um, yeah, one of my favorites, John Hyatt. You know, just you're you know, and, and I want to also acknowledge, you know, you're really funny. You are really funny. So, you know, I think humor is a big part of it, um, particularly yeah. in the live shows. Uh, yeah. w w when I'm when I'm playing live, I tend to to um, talk quite a bit. I think of myself as a troubadour. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, troubadours are the wandering minstrels who go town to town pretty much solo uh, playing original uh, music and telling stories. And so I tend to have windy stories that can 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 be kind of dark and also kind of funny poking fun at myself a lot really i think mm -hmm. i think humor's part of the journey uh, of the emotional ride that that i want to bring people on mm -hmm. yeah makes sense well your book is about the art and healing power of songwriting and that's a, a lot of your journey personally and um what what made you want to write the book uh, well, you know, to be honest, I, uh, I, 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 I felt as though I had something that, that I had experienced that was useful to try to capture, which is that music and song for me have been a salvation. Uh, and then I worked with wounded veterans and found that they could be a salvation for other kinds of trauma, uh, as well, war trauma. Uh, when I saw the power of music and song to be a, of service to those who served, that's when I was just convinced I got to get this into a book uh, so mm -hmm. that other songwriters uh, can, can um, I don't know, can, can, can hear from an older songwriter some of the power that I found in this art form uh, that's not just entertainment, that there's something... Uh, that can be transformative. Um, it is a powerful, powerful medium. Music and song is mm -hmm. is one of the most powerful art forms. It just goes straight to the heart, and there's no need for uh, you know a tour guide. You know, you're not going to a museum. You don't have to have gone to college to understand the painting. You just hear it and feel it. It's immediate, mm -hmm. and, and the power there uh, can can really be something. Uh, that uh, generates connection and empathy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for the listener, it can it can be uh, the experience of at least one person on earth understands me. That song gets me. Uh, but yeah. for example, the veterans, uh, the experience can be uh, a, a, a deeply emotional when they realize civilians can understand because the song just just opened up. Uh, uh, a pathway to their experience that that helps them to be understood. Yeah, and you're talking about that amazing album that you created, um, co-writing with with veterans, uh, called uh, Rifles and Rosary Beads. Right. That yeah. earned a Grammy nomination and so many awards and so many accolades, uh, deservedly. Um, and and this was an organization, song songwriters with that's it's called songwriting with soldiers um, um, songwriting. and um it, it, it's probably misnamed because we we don't just work with the army we work with the uh military all branches so sailors um mm -hmm. uh but people in the air force coast guard army navy air force marines all people special forces who served and their spouses so it's an organization that's a nonprofit that pairs professional songwriters uh, with veterans, active duty and retired. And we bear witness as songwriters and turn their stories into songs. Mm -hmm. and, and you tell some really uh, poignant um, stories in your book about uh, co-writing with some of these folks. And um, it's, it's really moving and, and powerful and, and important to to do this work and and are you still are you still participating in songwriting with soldiers? Uh, no, I um, 
I, I haven't done it uh, since uh, I did some Zoom co-writes during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm back on the road full time. I did that program. I worked with them for a little over a decade. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and they grew and got, got much bigger. Uh, yeah. And for me, my personality type is that I'm better independent or in a small startup. I, mm-hmm. I am unable to function in a corporate environment. I just, I'm just, I can't. I don't, I don't do rules very well. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I really liked it when we were inventing it. Um, mm-hmm. but when somebody hands me a manual and tells me, here's how we do it. I can't, I can't experience it in a way that, that that's wholehearted for me. I, I am very much an entrepreneur. So mm-hmm. I'm so glad it's going strong and, and as, as expanded, a lot more songwriters are involved. Uh, and the work that I did there, I'm so proud of and grateful for, uh, and, uh, carry on, you know, uh, myself and the founder, uh, Darden Smith walked, uh, in, in the, in the, um, uh, sort of in the end of the pandemic, we, we decided, you know what, let's let some other songwriters have a shot at it. Uh, Darden Dar- mm-hmm. and I both are, are made of the same sort of stuff. We were born the same day, the same year. And uh, wow. we're more founders than participants. You know, it, it's just a, yeah. uh, a a character, uh, I think, maybe flaw that I can't follow. Direct- mm-hmm. I am the world's least likely person to ever be in the military because I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't be told what to do very well. I don't listen. Yeah. 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 Well, it's under, you know, I think that there's a lot of, uh, of create creative force in the beginning of things. Yes. And that's what I thrive on. I, mm-hmm. I think of myself as a zero to one person. I like <laughs> manifesting something out of nothing. And, yeah. uh, and when it's time to franchise it, I'm bored. Yeah. Like, why would yeah, I want to do that? We, I want to invent something new, not replicate yeah what I've already invented, which is why songwriting is such a great uh, life's work for me. Because yeah. every time you go to the page, it's a new song and you don't know where it's going or what you're going to be asked to say. Every time, every single time, you yeah. have no idea what you're doing. It, it's not like you can repeat what you've done. I mean, you can, but that's terrible. You've got to go to a place you haven't been every time for it to be interesting and to be full of possibility and, and, and to not be redundant. Exactly. Exactly. You, um, in the book, you say writing songs helps me sort out confusion, untangle powerful emotions and ward off desperation. It helps me navigate the powerful emotional weather systems of life. And, you know, I wonder if we can talk a little bit about that idea. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think songwriting is purpose for me. It's purposeful. Uh, and um, I use it as a way of making sense of things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to sort out life in my head. Uh, and, and it's hard to sort it out in song it's just quite hard to sort out life but i think that music and song have given me uh a a mechanism uh that i can work with to try to make sense of what i'm doing or what the world is doing uh and Mm -hmm. turn it into a story that makes some kind of sense Uh, mostly life is is um is is slow moving and sort of non-linear and 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 there there's lots of lulls in between the happenings and with Mm -hmm. songs um i I find a way to connect the dots uh and to to turn uh things into a story that uh has connective tissue in it that that connects me to, to strangers and to to myself it's mm-hmm. easy to get disconnected from ourself. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you write about um, the, the, you wrote an album called The Foundling. 
And um, you talk about that in the book. And it, it seems like songwriting was really important in helping you kind of make sense of <laughs> the beginning of your life and um, and your adoption and and processing all of that is can we talk a little bit about about that record and about how you how you did that yeah yeah i was um i was given up at birth uh um and and uh put into a place called the uh, saint vincent's in new orleans uh, and i spent my first year there and i was adopted um uh, after about a year in the uh Catholic charity hospital there. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it profoundly affected me, but I didn't know it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't think my adoptive parents necessarily knew it either. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to figure out what happened. And, uh, you know, a lot of therapy, a lot of um, recovery work. I'm sober from drug and alcohol addiction. Um, uh, and, and a whole lot of, uh, um, really trying to make sense of my own choices that I've made led me to this project that I guess my soul had to write. It's a song cycle around, I guess you'd call it adoption trauma. Uh, mm -hmm. Adjustment disorder mm -hmm. and how to heal from those uh, pretty powerful blows that happen uh, at birth. For someone like mm -hmm. me, uh, I had no idea what was going on with me. I didn't know that I, I had that. And nobody around me knew that I had that. It just looked like mm -hmm. I was acting out for no yeah. apparent reason. Um, and the confusion that comes from that. Uh, the, the song cycle of the foundling really helped me to sort it out. It didn't fix it, mm -hmm. uh, but it gave me a language for it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what works with the veterans too. It does The yeah. songs don't fix it, but mm -hmm. we start to be able to talk about it in a new way. I think what happens is once you write it, you take a step back from being the story to being mm -hmm. the storyteller. Mm -hmm. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's real power in that. Mm -hmm. There's real power. There's agency in that. Instead of yeah. it happening to me, um, it, it, it becomes, uh, 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 I am telling the story of someone that it happened to. Mm -hmm. There's a step back from it being uh, a deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. And that articulation I think can can really bring um, uh, some 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 trans transformation. Some some uh, I just use the word agency. It gives mm -hmm. it gives it give it gave me power. It yeah. gave me power over the story because writers mm -hmm. get to write the ending. I have the pen in my hand. Mm -hmm. and that is something that uh, is really hard to come by when you're dealing with trauma. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's, it just strikes me as you're talking that it's also, you know, you know the story, but when you begin to tell the story, it, it takes on some new qualities perhaps. And, and there's a way in which you're, you're um, putting light on it. And, yeah. and it's, you know, it, it takes us from maybe the frozen place of knowing that trauma and moving it into this other place. Yeah. Yeah. You're going in there and, 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 and turning over the rocks and seeing what's underneath it. It's scary. Mm -hmm. You're vulnerable. Um, and you're poking the bear. Um, but it, 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 it is also, um, I don't know. I, I think the, the, the courage required to do it, um, gives agency to the person willing to, to go there. Um, and the truth is, and many therapists have told me, and I already knew it, that I've already survived it. But with trauma, you don't know that. 
Yeah. It feels like it's still happening. And so um, there's nothing that could be uncovered that could kill me. I already survived it. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was that I survived. Yeah. So that was was the challenge of the songs. And what I realized is it's a classic hero's journey in the Joseph Campbell sense. You end up back where you started, but you end up there with new perspective. It's um, it's it's it for me it was it has been the hero's journey. Uh, I'm I'm not unorphaned, uh, but I am empowered in my uh in my orphanness. I guess. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Oh no, 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 I was. That's good. Yeah, you, it's like you rescued a part of yourself from the place that was in trauma. Well and put. I went back and got the kid and carried her home. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, well, so much of your work and, you know, you talk about your you talk about your addiction and your recovery and, you know, your your healing in many ways in the book. And you do it again in a humorous way and with a lot of stories and stories that people will really can relate to, I think, in their own lives. Um, and a lot what strikes me is your willingness to be vulnerable. And I want to say, I think there's so much power in that and bravery in that thank you yeah thank you the bravery in that is terrifying and i do it anyway <laughs> but so do all my heroes it's, it's mm -hmm. not like original or anything the artists that i know and love all do this it's it's what it's what artists do is you, you go to those places and you report back from them uh, it is the job maybe it's our job in in our culture maybe it's the job always been the job of the artist to this is what we do who else is going to do that right this is what we do uh and uh it it takes a lot of um patience and effort uh and you've got to you got to you got to you got to walk uh got to walk the lonesome miles but the rewards are rich and deep uh and i think it's worth it uh, but it's never not scary. Uh, it's scary for a lot of reasons, too. It's scary because you don't know where you're going or what you're doing, or if you're on a wild goose chase, or if you're about to land in something uh, that could just be a, a, a giant um, uh, uh, revelation about yourself that you don't want to know. Um, it's scary because you might say something that that uh is unsettling to people you love um and it's scary because it just might might suck you know <laughs> who wants to suck it might not be interesting at all there there is not a a, a value on, on this path in being clever mm -hmm. uh that 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 neat little package uh that so many uh uh songs or made of this doesn't really work on this path it's messy um but it's a you know i'd rather be discovering uh than wrapping packages <laughs> that, that i like that description well you know you say it's the, the job of the artist and i think um what the artist does is it it show you know offers some solace in in the music for the listener and ultimately it's the job of all of us you know it's the human path if we're really on it if we're not checking out you know if we're not distracting ourselves then we're all facing our fears we're all on that hero's journey um to understand ourselves and whatever this is and so you you know when when you as the artist does that you're you're showing 
you know, you're, you're, you're inviting others to do that and, and sharing your own, you know, experience or path with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, Laura. I think it is for, 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 for uh, many, many people, uh, uh, what, what's required, uh, to, 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 to become an adult, to, mm-hmm. to, to, to shed, uh, what, what's not useful what, to, to release, uh, uh, things that were glued to us as children by people who didn't even know what they were doing. Um, uh, the thing is that the artist does this work publicly, right? Um, for most folks, it's a private and personal journey that you may do with 12 step work or, or therapy or any number of, uh, spiritual practices. But for the artist, we go on this, we go on this wild ride in public. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then we, 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 uh, do it again and again and again. And there's no, there's no final destination. As soon as we get to where the lights are on, we got to go back into the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I first I want to show the book "Saved Saved by a Song," and uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff going on in there for me. Um, but can I can I read you read you something that's you. about yeah. like, that I thought was. Um, I mean, there's a lot, I've got a lot of things that I could read, but this is about vulnerability and, um, you know, it's, it's just lovely. So as you're talking about your singing, you say, I'm not a trained vocalist, not a singer singer, but singing makes me feel naked, exposed. Some say my singing is an acquired taste. One thing for sure, I've never had the ability to hold a note like some singers and bring an audience to their feet screaming, hell yeah. All this is to say, I know my voice suits my songs and conveys emotion. I sing convincingly and for that I'm grateful, but I have no sonic fig leaf to hide behind. My fear of looking people in the eye when I sing feels primal. I close my eyes to protect my heart. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I understand closing your eyes when you're singing, you know, and I I I I feel like the audience should too. <laughs> I think everybody should just <laughs> close their eyes and take it all in. You know? <laughs> um, but I, you know, it's interesting that you're you know your that that idea of your singing. Because the thing about your singing is it's so pure, it's authentic. And I think anyone hearing you sing feels that, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know what you mean about singers, you know, who can bring their, bring people to their feet and saying, hell yeah. But like a lot of times, you know, in that kind of a performance, um, I, I feel like I feel a little manipulated sometimes, you know, not all the time, but it's, it's sometimes it can get a little over the top and be an act. Of course with gospel, it's a whole other thing, but, um, but you know, your voice is, is beautiful and pure and um, honest. And so, you know, I just, I, I wanted to say that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's a big discussion. Like what is singing? Um, yeah. it's a really big discussion. Uh, uh, I've had to, well, I mean, I would think most, I listened to an interview with Billy Joel who said he hates his own voice. You know, mm-hmm. I think of him as a fabulous singer. He doesn't think mm-hmm. of him as a fabulous singer. Yeah. Um, I think there's a sort of, um, instinctual sort of most, most of us who sing are kind of like, yeah, you know, this is what I got. I've got to make it work. Um, <laughs> but I think um, uh, a trained voice or a vocalist with uh, uh, extraordinary ability um, 
is is uh, um, I mean, I, I feel this way that they have the upper hand over a songwriter. Uh, in that the audience wants to be impressed uh, in general by a voice. They want, they want a singer to do what they can't do. Um, and uh, in some ways, I'm the opposite. I'm sort of doing what they can do if they just tried. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so um, it works okay, you know. Uh, I, I feel that... Uh, that that self-consciousness a lot uh uh still uh and wish that i had a a grander voice but i have the one i was born with and i want to make mm -hmm. use of it um mm -hmm. joni mitchell's quoted as saying some will say she couldn't sing but no will none will say she didn't sing <laughs> i love that quote yeah yeah well, that yeah, that's a great quote, and it's true. I'm not so sure that anyone can do what you're doing, but but I, I appreciate the um, the idea <laughs> that that people should try and, yeah. you know, and they got to practice a whole lot to start. Getting... <laughs> Maybe so. You got to get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you tell a great story of of coming to Nashville, and you know, I'm I'm fascinated too by. Um, the idea of being gay in Nashville and that, you know, not, not to stigmatize it, but I, I you know, back in the day, when, you know, when I was playing and um, touring, it was, it was definitely different than it is now, but I feel like, you know, it's still got some, some, probably some issue or, I don't know. I just feel like you're holding you're holding uh, something for, you know, queer people by being able to do what you do in the genre that you do it in and at the level that you do it in. Yeah. Yeah. I may be the first. I'm certainly the first <laughs> openly gay person to play the Opry. Yeah. Um, I'm not the first gay person to play the Opry. Katie Lang beat me there, but she mm -hmm. wasn't out yet. Um, I, I, I know there's a, a lot of gay and lesbian people who play the opera who aren't out still, um, but I never was in, so I didn't have to worry about coming out. Um, <laughs> and I never made a big issue of being gay. I just, it's a matter of course to me, and that's how I've always treated it. So I never felt yeah. like I had to talk about it. I feel as though it's obvious. It walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. It's a duck. So now <laughs> let's get on with it. Um, and so because I've always been matter of fact about it, um, I am very, very comfortable with that part of myself. Um, mm -hmm. I think it helps others to be. And if they're just going to be flat out prejudiced, there's nothing I can do anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not going to let their prejudice stop me from kicking down uh, doors and going into the room. Um, yeah. And uh, that's my way, whether I would be gay or straight, that's how I am. Uh, if I, if I want to go into the room, I'm going to find a way through the window if I have to. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm very ambitious. I'm very focused on what I want to do. I know how to, I know how to, to, um, to, to work a situation until I get what I want from it and need from it. Um, and that has really been a big, uh, um, I, I think advantage for me as a, a gay person in Nashville early on, because I just wasn't going to be stopped. And I didn't acknowledge or notice if people were opposed to me because of my, my sexuality. I just didn't even, I just, just kept going. And I still do. You know, when I, <laughs> when I play the Opry now, I'm sure there's people in the audience going, what, what is this? And there's others going, oh my God, look, it's it's like someone in our family like it's a it, it's a mixed reaction always and that's probably good it, everybody gets a mixed reaction it's yeah. i don't i just i haven't had if if there's been prejudice against me for being gay i haven't mm -hmm. experienced it in real time i'm sure there's been i know every single day if i was a man 
my career would be way ahead of where it is. I think sexism here and everywhere is more pronounced than homophobia in my That's... experience. Mm -hmm. I know if I was a man, it would, I would have a very different experience than what I've had with the songs I write. I just don't know if, if being a lesbian is that big of a deal. But being a woman <laughs> is a huge deal. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point. And it always has been. Um, in the music I mean, business, changed. for sure. But everywhere. Yeah. But in our business, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I remember back in the 90s, kind of before Sarah McLaughlin and the Lilith Fair, it changed a little bit. But back then, they weren't even putting women on as opening acts for women because it was too boring. And they still and, aren't. Really? Yeah. Wow. Artists that we know and love won't have a woman open for them. Wow. They just won't. Wow. And and DJs back then didn't get any of the prime when female DJs didn't get any of the prime spots that they put on a Sunday morning or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you're well, you're, you know, you're you're uh, in your in your Mary Gaucher way, you are uh you know, leading some, leading the, 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 the fight forward. It, and I want to say you reminded me of John Lewis, the great uh, civil rights activist, you know, when you said, I'm going to get in however I get in. And, and he, he said, if there's not a seat table for me, I'm going to make one. <laughs> good trouble, making some good trouble. That's right. Look, you got to make trouble. You got mm -hmm. the way things are is not the way things should be. And so mm -hmm. we have to, we have to rearrange that. And, uh, that's going to upset some people and, uh, power has to be, has to be grabbed. And Pelosi mm -hmm. said that nobody gives you power or shares power. You got to go get it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I do it with the power of my songs. Uh, and then yeah. the forcefulness of my uh, Enneagram eight personality where I'm, I'm just a, I'm a CEO type. I want to be, I want to be in the captain's chair. That's where I belong. Yeah. And so, so I, 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 I use that uh, as an entrepreneur to get me where I need to be as a, as an artist in, 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 you know, at festivals or at the Opry or as a songwriter, getting songs recorded by other artists. I, I just go to where it has to happen, uh, and I, I do everything I can in my power to make it happen. I'm glad that you do. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, Mary, I really appreciate you being on the show, taking the time today. Um, I want to invite everybody to get your book, Saved by a Song. It's also on audio book, and you are um, reading the book yourself and you're playing some songs. It's a great, a great audio book and a great gift, uh, anytime, but we're in the holiday season and your new record, um, dark enough to be the stars. Um, one of my favorites right now, and I'm lucky enough again to have a partner who, um, likes music and doesn't mind me playing things over and over again. So I, I hope everyone will, uh, go out and, uh, get your book and your records. And um, yeah, I, I just, again, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me on and introducing me to your audience. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, and you've got some tours coming up. You're going to be in, in Ireland or, or in the UK in April, I think you just announced. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, I'm always on the road. I'm a troubadour. I am always on the road. Uh, and uh uh, I, I do have a, a, a six week run in the UK and Ireland coming up in, in the early spring. Um, but there'll be a lot more tour dates prior to that too. There, there's, uh, my schedule's on my website and, and I'm always out there working cause it's what I love to do. It's what you do. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Mary. And, and, uh, have a great holiday. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Have a good holidays.